Hi teens, I'm making this video for you because nobody really gives you an owner's manual for your brain or how to take good care of it. And so hopefully this will be kind of a resource for you that will give you useful information and help you uh, get the most out of your brain both while you're a teen and in your future. So I'm going to show you uh, a fun thing I made, inspired by a brilliant EMDR therapist named Anna Gomez. It's called the Bag of Mixed Up Thoughts and Feelings, also known as your brain. It's representing your brain because we have a lot of things that we store in our brain. Good memories, bad memories, a lot of feelings are, can be there. As we open up, we're going to be seeing that Kind of right up front and center are some of our disturbing memories. It's kind of like they like to jump in front of our attention and, and get our attention and say, you know, something hurt and you've kind of like not paid attention to it. So here's one disturbing experience. I don't know if you can see what that looks like. It's distressing. It's kind of a dark experience. And here's a really scary one. So this could be like a dog bite attack or a shark attack. It's pretty creepy. So this one, I took the time to put a zipper in there because I wanted to show how EMDR works. We're going to focus with EMDR on the worst part of the picture of what happened, the negative thought that you say about yourself, the distressing emotion, and then when do you, where do you feel that in your body. And as you're focused on those things, the MDR therapist guides you to make eye movements. And it's kind of like that the distress, the heaviness, the yuck of that experience gradually dumps out. And you're left with the shell of the experience. And your brain will then allow that to be stored functionally, just with a little narrative of what happened and a positive conclusion about yourself. So it's not going to clog up your brain, um, and it'll get stored back in the long-term memory, along with a lot of other good memories. And people start finding out that, oh my gosh, I started to remember this and that that happened at that time. It was lovely. And these spontaneous positive memories come to the fore. We know that's the sign the adaptive information processing system is engaged. What happens in the brain when it gets overwhelmed by too many distressing experiences? It gets kind of stuck on negativity, unfortunately. I'm an EMDR therapist, and I worked with a young 17-year-old I'll call Jeremy. He's given me permission to share his story with you. He used to be an A student um, in middle school, and. Uh, maybe beginning of high school. But he started having more and more problems of not even wanting to study. So he kind of gave up on doing his homework and of course his grades suffered. And then he was feeling bad about himself so he started drinking and uh, started getting in trouble with the law. And his parents were very concerned. He was kind of getting concerned too though he had also tried to adopt an I don't care attitude. Like EMDR therapists do, we ask our nosy, snoopy questions because we want to understand what happened in your life. How can we make sense out of this change in the way you are, Jeremy? Uh, all the clients are always free to say, no, I don't want to answer that question, so um, I'm just kind of making fun of us for being nosy and snoopy, but well, it's, we're interested. Let's say that. We are really interested in making sense of what's happening. In Jeremy's case, I discovered that he'd had a very bad accident when he was about 14. He was visiting a friend who had a, an amazing private pool at his house with a giant tubular slide, much like you see at a water park. And unbeknownst to Jeremy, as he was coming down the slide, his friend was climbing up and they had a collision in the middle. Jeremy, with his braces, got kind of knocked to the top of the, the tube, where unfortunately there was a bolt hanging down and it caught his braces, 
and it ripped out four of his teeth. It was an awful accident and it caused him to need oral surgery a number of times. So I asked Jeremiah, when that happened, what's the worst image that comes to mind? And he surprised me by saying, it was the pile of homework waiting for me after every surgery. I thought it was going to be the pain, which there was pain. And seeing that pile made him want to give up. I told him that I believed the trauma of the accident and that image of piles of homework got stuck in your brain so that there was no longer room, much room in your brain for learning. Because of that, how can you study? How can you relax? How can you concentrate? When I told him my view of what was going on, he said, that makes sense. Let's get going. And his EMDR therapy just took several sessions. It didn't take much time. And at the last session, he said, I am actually eager to get my homework done now. <laughs> I can't get, I can't wait. I want to get going on it. So that was pretty cool for him and it was very cool for me too. So uh, happy to report Jeremy's update. He's now a junior in college. He's doing very well. And had he continued the way he was going, um, we could not expect that he'd have made it to college. So it's really a nice success story for him and for EMDR. EMDR therapy, it stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. So while a person is focusing on the different aspects of the experience they had, the therapist guides them to do eye movements. And it helps the negative images and feelings and thoughts desensitize gradually and steadily till they don't bother the person anymore. When that happens, Francine Shapiro, the developer of EMDR, has described we must have something really healthy in our brain. She decided to call it the Adaptive Information Processing System. It's always there, but it can get clogged and stuck when there's too much distress, too many unresolved memories. And they get dysfunctionally stored in kind of a raw form, kind of an agitated and distressed form. And then we carry that distress around with us. Once EMDR helps to just gently desensitize those memories, what happens is this health comes back to the fore naturally, quickly, and spontaneously. So he was able to say, you know, I want to get my homework done now. I want to get to work. That is health. That is your natural curiosity, your natural capacity and desire to learn. So she called it the Adaptive Information Processing System. So it's a pretty cool thing about the brain and uh, and our therapists observe this happening all the time, so we are very uh, impressed with the Adaptive Information Processing System, or for short, AIP.